Hey, a friend, Chris here from WideLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, I want to talk about compression. Compression is a tool that we use in productions and songwriting and mixing to tighten the dynamics of instruments and tracks. But perhaps you are someone who gets kind of overwhelmed by the Logic Compressor, right? There's so many different controls. It's like, what's threshold? What's ratio, attack, release? What is all this stuff? You know you need to use it, but it's just kind of a lot. Well, what I want to share with you is that there is actually another variation of the Logic Compressor where instead of worrying about 100 different controls, you can worry about one control. So basically, all you have to do is just turn up the compression until it sounds good to your ears. So I want to show you how to do that right now. Let's dig into it. On screen, I have an audio recording of a drum kit, overheads, kick, snare. And what I'd like to do is, is glue the different drum tracks together using compression. And what I mean by glue is, is I just want to tighten the dynamics. I want to bring up some of the sustain. So all of these different audio recordings feel like they're part of the same drum kit. Now, as you can see on the channel strip for my drum track stack is that I have an instance of the Logic Compressor loaded. And typically this is the tool that you would use to tighten the dynamics of an instrument. So if I hit play, just watch the graph on the compressor. Notice the difference between the top peaks and the lowest points in the audio. And notice the threshold is set to zero. The ratio is set one to one. So this compressor is not going to do anything to the audio at all. We're just using it as a visual display. All right, take a listen and a look. All right, so there's not much of a bed of audio or sustain. We're seeing mostly quick transient peaks that are hovering just above and just below the negative 10 line. So there's some variation. If we watch and listen again, Right, there's variation here and I wanna tighten up. I wanna reduce the variation. I wanna to try to bring up some sustain while reducing the peak so everybody feels like they're gelled together. So let me try just using the Logic Compressor just as a quick demonstration. All right, so that's pretty good. And you might have just thought to yourself, Chris, what, what just happened here? And what I basically did was, is I raised the ratio because at a ratio of one to one, we do no compression with a ratio of three to one as the drums overshoot the threshold, which is the line that says, hey, once the signal passes the threshold, we got to start compressing the signal. Then I set the attack to 50 milliseconds to just let some of the transient through, not to squash the drums too hard and then I also tried out two different models of the compressor, the Studio VCA and the Vintage VCA, right? So I did that very quickly. But again, if you're someone who's like, Chris, what is all this stuff? Well, what I want to suggest that you try is that instead of using the Logic Compressor, why don't you try using the multi-effect plugin, FatFX? Now, I know in comparison, FatFX looks even crazier than the Logic Compressor, right? I mean, the Logic Compressor at least looks like a piece of gear. Whereas fat effects looks like just craziness. But what I'm going to ask you to do is put your blinders on and just focus on the one module that says compressor in the fat effects. In fact, I recommend that you just turn off all of the modules. You can just click on the power button on each module, turn off all of the modules in fat effects, and then just go up here and save as default. And this way, as you get more and more comfortable with the fat effects, you can just power on the modules that make the most sense to you, and you can ignore everything else. The FatFX is a criminally overlooked plugin in Logic Pro. It's called FatFX for a reason, because it makes signals fatter. It makes them more bombastic. It makes it more exciting. But I just want to focus your attention on the compressor module. So if I slide this over, take a look. The compressor in FatFX, instead of having many different knobs for you to use and many different controls to consider, it has amount and release. 
And honestly, I'm just going to ask you to focus on the amount control and just ignore the release for right now. The other thing is, is that there are various compressor types as well in the fat effects. If you click on the drop down menu, you'll notice that many of the compressor types are similar to that inside the Logic compressor. From the Platinum compressor to Studio VCA, Studio FET, the Classic VCA, the Vintage VCA, Vintage FET, and Vintage Opto. Plus there are two extra, Classic and Clip. Honestly, you don't really need to know what all of these different compressors are. Just know that they each have their own sound. But really, all you have to do is just drive up the compression until it sounds good to your ears and then dial back the output because it will get louder and we don't want our ears to get tricked just by the fact that the signal is getting louder. You want to be sure that you're hearing what the compressor is doing. So check it out. We're going to keep the compressor open here so we can keep an eye on the graph and what's going on. And I'll start out with the compressor and the fat effects turned off. When I hit play, I'll turn the compressor on and we'll take notice of what happens. Here we go. Okay, so immediately the signal got louder, our drums got louder just by turning on the compressor. And I have the compressor set to the Studio FET. So keeping this in mind, I need to turn down the output so that we don't get tricked by the fact that the drums got louder. Let's take a listen and I'll make an adjustment with the output. It already sounds like that the drums are being tightened up. Now let's start dialing up the compression. Again, just with this amount knob. As I reduce the amount, it's like reducing the threshold. And I have to imagine it's more than just threshold. It's probably controlling, in this case, the amount is controlling probably threshold, ratio, and attack. So it's doing multiple things at the same time. And all we have to do is just determine what sounds good. So let's give it a try. So a lot has happened in a very short amount of time. I dialed up the amount till it felt good to me. And then I dialed down the output. Now this will be a juggling act. You have to bring down the output while you simultaneously bring up the amount control. Because again, you don't want to be tricked by a level adjustment just by the fact that the signal gets louder. You want to listen for how the compression sounds. And I chose the Studio FET because it has a little more bite and attitude to it as compared to the other compression models. So I'll set it in the Logic Compressor to Studio FET, but keep in mind again, the threshold's at zero, the ratio's at one to one, so the compressor here is not doing anything. It's just the fat effects. Also take note on the graph here as I bypass and reintroduce the fat effects. The transients of the drums are getting hard stopped at negative 10 on the compressor here. That's because the fat effects not only compresses, but it seems to have a ceiling or limiter at the output stage of the compressors. I can say this occurs for all of the compressors except for the classic here. If I set it to classic, hit play. We're wavering around. If I set it to the Studio FET or something else, right? You can see there's a hard limit there, but not with the classic. So as you saw, all I basically did was adjust the amount control. I didn't worry about attack. I didn't worry about ratio. None of that stuff. And to my ears, the drums sound better. They sound more glued together. They're more dynamically reined in. Now, I probably have 
gone a little too far with negative eight. Let me back it up to maybe negative five. Because I am clipping the transient for sure. If I dial this back up. You can hear it, it gets tighter. It sounds even a little brighter, again, with one control. So if you just, again, put your blinders on, ignore all of this other stuff, even though there's a lot of good stuff in the fat effects, if you ignore all of this other stuff and just focus on this one compressor block and the output control, you can achieve a ton without having to worry about a hundred other controls. And for extra credit, let me close the fat effects and let's bring in Chroma Glow. And I'm going to leave it set to the modern tube. I'm not even going to touch the drive and take a listen. If I turn these off. Back on. We have a dynamically tight drum kit here. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, as always, please subscribe to Wide Logic Pro Rules here on the channel or on the website. And please be sure to check out the description below where I always include links to PDFs, guides, and templates to help you in your journey with Logic Pro. Thanks so much, and I'll talk to you later. Take care.